What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Backtrack Cinema. My name is Jason, and welcome to 31 Days of Horror. And today's topic is my favorite found footage film. And the film I decided to talk about probably is my favorite, and that's Paranormal Activity. Now, as far as found footage stuff goes, um, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I mean, you, I think you got to do something creative. You got to make it scary in the horror genre anyway, I think, for it to work for me. I was never that big on the Blair Witch project back in the day. I got the appeal, though. The thing about found footage is that it's supposed to immerse you that this is real, that this is this is really happening, even though everything is staged and it's still a movie at the end of the day and it's supposed to entertain us, right? But Paranormal Activity, I mean, this thing was made for $15,000 and launched a franchise, made tons at the box office. I can remember watching these back in the mid 2000s and every October we looked forward to the next one and the next one and the next one. And you know what? It's not, it's not that bad of a franchise, really. If you like this kind of stuff, this kind of stuff deals with dynamic possession, supernatural stuff. And I, f I find it pretty terrifying to be honest. And the reason why it's terrifying is because it's such a slow build and builds and builds and builds and builds. And does things little at a time, like you just you just hear knocking, and then they just they wake up at the same time every morning. And they hear something, and then it keeps building and building. Where Katie wakes up, and she's just staring at her husband, and then she gets dragged out of the she gets dragged out of the door, you know, out of her room, and everything. Like that. It builds and builds to right to that climatic ending where she's literally possessed, kills her husband, all in all that jazz. You know the story. But it's that slow approach, that slow burn, more nuanced horror. And I like where they position the camera in the middle of the night where he's he's filming everything so they could try and piece together everything. Because your eye is always drawn to that that door and that dark space. It works because we're keeping the monster in the dark. These films are more nuanced and, and it works because you got to keep the monster in the dark. The moment we start showing the monster too much, you know, showing the, that reveal, it's over, right? That that's that's over. That's kind of like your, that's your climax. I think Hitchcock once said, "It's not the bang; it's the anticipation of the bang." And that's what I really love about this movie. Um, our main character, Katie, just I think she does a great job. The actress in this, she is fucking terrified in this movie, and the douchebag husband, Mika. I did not feel for this guy by the end of this. I go, this guy was taking things so lightly. He thought it was just some bully coming in the middle of the night. He's just like, <laughs> he, he's just some of the decisions he makes. Like, don't bring a Ouija board in. What the hell does he do? He brings a Ouija board in. The thing lights up in flames. And I mean, this guy, this, this was a douchebag of a character. And you're like, you could see how this dynamic force is just ripping these two apart. It's feeding off all that negative energy, right? And, um, man, like, I mean, if your girlfriend or your wife was terrified, like, I mean, what, would you act like this guy? This guy's decision making, man. It's just like, I go, dude, you're an asshole. <laughs> and the use of sound design or lack of. <sighs> hearing the banging and hearing someone walking and all that kind of stuff. The little things you're, you're, you got to really keep your ears open and you got to, and your eyes are constantly drawn. To the dark in this you know what i mean just love that about this film definitely they tapped into something they tapped into a market that worked and they you know they're turning one out every single year and seeing katie being run down by fear and anxiety through this dynamic force by you know she's very glowing and smiling at the beginning of this and by the end of it i can't i can't be i can't just let's go please let's go let's just go right now let's just She's done, man. She's fucking done, man. You just see it in her eyes, her body language, slouching over, just, just, and that's when it goes for the kill. Possesses her, takes her over, and everything like that. So just, I, I just think a, a lot of the elements in here are pretty fantastic. A lot of my favorite moments are in the middle of the night when they're hearing shit, or but when she gets dragged out the hallway. I thought that was a freaking intense moment, man. I thought that was fantastic. Or was she just standing over looking at her husband for hours and you see her get back into bed? 
or when he goes outside and he, and she he finds the husband finds her outside she doesn't remember anything just little things like that just make it really work for me and that ending that very very ending cuz you're not seeing anything that's going on you hear her yelling mika goes downstairs it's it, it's using as dave mccray would say in the horror community theater of the mind suggestion it's not what we see it's what we think we see it's what we hear without seeing right and then our minds filling in shit and when our mind fills in shit it makes the whole thing absolutely work and honestly fear is subjective what we find scary is subjective but it's a scary fucking movie the stress and the anxiety i feel while i'm watching this movie as a like sometimes I got to take a break even watching this movie. And that's not like me. I'm not like that. I'm a freaking I've been watching horror all of my life. Now a lot of you may look at this and this look this is just a joke, man, because it's just a video camera, but it's the way they're placing that video camera that that really helps it. And it's like I said, it's subjective. It scares me. I mean, that's the kind of stuff terrifies me and I'm a different horror fan now than I was as a teenager. Or even as a, like, in my 30s. I mean, I used to be in to the gore and the splatter fest and everything. Now I'm like, now I'm I'm psycho. I'm What Lies Beneath. I'm Rosemary's Baby. I'm Black Christmas. I'm, I'm these films that use a slow bird approach that really build the suspense and tension. Love my slashers. Love them. I like a good splatter fest. And a slasher works best when there's a psychological component to it for me. I love watching this one. Because the anxiety, the stress-induced fear it puts inside of me. It puts you right into what the character's feeling, right? And always love this one. So, but what about you guys? Do you like paranormal activity? Let me know in the comments below if you do. We'll have a great discussion on this 31 Days of Horror. And I hope you're enjoying them. If you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe, share the videos around. Let's get this series uh, active. You know what I mean? Let's get people watching it all that jazz my name is jc you're watching backtrack cinema i'll see you next time and i will see you in the movies cheers